Here's the pancreas. It's described as having a head, a neck, a body, and a tail. The head of the pancreas is closely applied to the inner curvature of the duodenum. The neck, body, and tail of the pancreas extend to the left and slightly upward, ending here close to the spleen, which we'll see shortly. Behind the pancreas are the body of L1, the inferior vena cava, the aorta and superior mesenteric artery, and the left kidney. The lower part of the head of the pancreas curls around to the left, forming the uncinate process. The portal vein passes beneath the neck of the pancreas on its way to the liver. The exocrine secretions of the pancreas empty into the duodenum by way of the pancreatic duct, or ducts. Here we've removed part of the head of the pancreas to show the main pancreatic duct entering the duodenum. We'll see more of that in a minute. Here at the porta, here's the pancreas, the head of the pancreas, the uncinate process, and the neck, the body, and the tail. In a specimen in which the arteries have been injected with latex, we've removed the lower part of the rib cage, and we've removed the left lobe of the liver, which was here. The celiac trunk arises back here. To see it, we'll take the stomach and the lesser omentum out of the picture. We've also removed all the fatty connective tissue from this uppermost part of the posterior abdominal wall. Here's the opening in the diaphragm for the esophagus. Here below it is the opening for the aorta. Here's the aorta itself, just visible above the pancreas. This short vessel coming straight forwards is the celiac trunk. It arises right at the top of the aortic opening, between the crura of the diaphragm. We'll return to the division of the common hepatic into the hepatic and gastroduodenal arteries. From near this division, two branches to the stomach arise, the right gastric, which usually arises from the hepatic, and the right gastroepiploic, which arises from the gastroduodenal. After giving off the right gastroepiploic, the gastroduodenal artery continues as the pancreaticoduodenal artery. It runs downward behind the duodenum, supplying it and the head of the pancreas. Here, the divided duodenum has been retracted to the right. Normally, it's here. Here's the celiac artery, dividing into the left gastric artery, the splenic artery, and the common hepatic artery, which in turn divides into the hepatic artery and gastroduodenal artery. If we divide the gastrosplenic ligament, which we've done here, we come into the lesser sac, which is no surprise when we recall the developmental anatomy here. You'll recall that the spleen developed between the two layers of the dorsal mesogastrium. As it grew, it bulged out within the outer layer, which forms its peritoneal covering. Two double folds of peritoneum meet at the hilum, one in front, the gastrosplenic ligament, which we just divided, and one behind, the lienorenal ligament, which we haven't seen yet. Between the two folds is the left-hand limit of the lesser sac. 